As all you're aware, the accounts of this event relative to Emily Goody's, Good's arrest on May 12th, uh, it's been rehashed and told over and over and over again, and it's not our point here to do that again. What I'd like to do, though, is to address what we believe is four critical points of inaccuracies in the statements made by Ms. Good. One, there were three occupants in the vehicle. Two, a statement by Ms. Good led the officers to believe that she had an association with the gang members in that vehicle. Quote, these are my friends, what's going on? Three, the proximity of Miss Good and her refusal to comply with the officer's request was the basis for her arrest, not the location of her property line. Four, the videotaping was not the basis or the consideration for the arrest of Miss Good. There's no basis whatsoever for any one to believe that there was only one individual in the vehicle that was stopped that night despite what Miss Good has said repeatedly. That's just not true. The two officers standing next to the vehicles were depicted on many occasions of having no concern with Miss Good's interference is inaccurate. The reports of those backup officers written on the night in question clearly, clearly states their concern with having to simultaneously watch the occupants in the vehicle and also with the interfering actions of Miss Good who was standing behind them. This caused the officers to request additional backup because of the concern for their safety. Miss Good's statements to the officers, quote, these are my friends, what's going on? Her statement heightened the officer's concerns that she had some type of affiliation with these gang members. Miss Good's close proximity behind the officers was the point of concern, not her videotaping on her property. Had Miss Good simply gone onto her porch or into her home where she would have been safer, no further actions would simply have occurred that night. Our officers working on the streets are completely accustomed to the technology that has them in constant review. In fact, the sheer number of the city-owned surveillance cameras, as well as those owned by businesses, routinely record the actions of our members on the street daily. Not to mention that every single individual that we come into contact has a cell phone with audio and video capability. Our officers are aware of this technology and it causes them no concern. The simple fact that the officers did not confiscate Mrs. Good's recording device, which they would have the right to have done following their, her arrest, instead allowed the device to be turned over to an associate and to continue recording her arrest. The most intriguing question here, and, uh, and here's why no one's been able to view the unedited video of the night in question. In fact, after this union raised the issue of only seeing the edited video, it was reported by Mrs. Good that a burglary had occurred in her home. Coincidentally, one of the items taken was this recording device by Mrs. Good, uh, while other property in her home was left behind. The agenda of Mrs. Good confronting our officers on that night has led to serious concerns for the safety and the welfare of our officers who serve this community. Mrs. Good's message that has gone out to the public is that you have a right to interfere and question the actions of a police officer uh, is irresponsible, is a danger to the officers, the individuals the officers are dealing with, and any other bystanders. A simple street stop can turn deadly in seconds. 
One of the most glaring injustices of this whole video frenzy has been overlooked, and that's the many threats that have been placed against our involved members and police officers in general. The posting of the home address of the police officer involved in the arrest has led to document, documented incidents of harassment at his home, as well as numerous threats via email, social media networks against him, his family, as well as officers not even involved in this incident. An example of some of these threats are, I hope this faggot gets killed. I want to see cops like this getting fried and hung in the streets. If you wear a badge, you're a target. I'm going to add, these threats are not the worst threats, and they're not the threats that are being investigated. We're not going to release them because there's an investigation pending. Currently, these threats are, are being pursued by the RPD, Monroe County DA's office, as well as other law enforcement agencies, state and federal. There's subpoenas, court orders, they're currently being written and directed for this information.